YouTube fam, welcome to Watchlist Wednesday. So I want to talk about the top three stocks that you need to put on your watch list because at the end of the day, uh, we just want to know what stocks to pick, right? So make sure uh, you stick around to the end. I have a bonus question. We're going to be joined by Brad Smith, who is the CEO of We Trade HQ, but he's also a mentor uh, and specializes in, in top stocks. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get Brad in here. All right. Boom. Okay. So Brad, welcome to the first installment of Watchlist Wednesday. Are you excited or what? Yeah. <laughs> Batman Zoom. Batman Zoom, baby. We'll, we'll explain that to them later. <laughs> um, so first off, the market, um, we're, we're kicking off earnings season, and this has been an interesting earnings season, especially because it's the first full quarter that it was the Rona. So um, Goldman Sachs reported this morning. But man, they freaking crushed it. I know, man, they crushed it. Um, casinos are moving, airlines are moving, everything's moving. So give me sort of the, the 30,000 foot view of what you're thinking about um, moving forward with the market and how you anticipate it reacting. I mean, I think it'll be interesting because, you know, we're still, we're, it's Wednesday, you know, as of this recording. So we just heard from Goldman Sachs. I think it'll be interesting to hear from the regional banks. So like the bigger banks obviously seem like they're doing okay. We just got, you know, Wells Fargo didn't really do so well. And then Citigroup kind of didn't really do so well either. And Citigroup is more of a regional. So I'm curious to see how PNC reports some of these smaller banks to see how uh, they're holding up as far as like, you know, mortgage payments or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting still. I think that still, there's still a lot up in the air. And I think one thing that a lot of people, I mean, Delta reported earnings and nobody was shocked. And I think that it's something that we were already prepared for. So when we see something like news is better than what we were expecting, I think people are, are genuinely excited for that. And that's why we're seeing the move in the market. Plus, you know, the vaccine news has got the market going nuts too. Yeah. So on a day that everything is going wild and crazy and it seems like you could throw a dart at anything and it go green, like, yeah. um, do you tend to hold back a little bit and sort of like let your runners run? And then like, how do you play that? Yeah, so there's been a running theme lately since, you know, all this has happened. And it's that whenever there's positive news as it relates to the Rona, all the remote stocks, all the remote work stocks and like stay at home quote stocks tank. And then it's like buying opportunity almost every time because then you go and buy them on the cheap. The next day, some news comes out about how there's been a spike in cases or jobs, you know, more jobs have been lost. And then the remote work stocks go right back up. And so it's just kind of been like rinse and repeat for the last 12 weeks, it seems like. Yeah. Okay. So with that said, there's always opportunities to yeah. find stocks. Um, that's what your specialty is. Your channel on the chaos. Um, you actually send out a watch list every morning. And I know because I work with you on the watch list. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I want to talk about, um, your top three stocks that you feel that, that should be on, that are on your watch list or sh should be on somebody else's watch list. Um, but right before I get to that, we have a question from the WeTradeHQ community uh, that's important to ask, which is how do you identify what stocks go on to your watch list or just identify stocks in general you're, you're looking at? So usually when I'm looking at stocks, I create, I've created like a pre-market scanner um, that I've actually made a couple of videos on on my channel. Um, and you know, I'm looking for some, some unusual volume, volume that comes in that we haven't seen for, you know, a couple of days or two weeks or something like that. And usually when you see volume pop up on like that, pop up like that, you don't, you try to figure out why there's gotta be a reason why people all of a sudden are buying this up. And so, uh, you go to, you know, do some more discovery, some more due diligence, figure out what's going on. And then you can make your decision from there. Now, the stocks that I pick are usually ones that are good quality companies that have good balance sheets. They're not highly speculative or anything like that, because I also want to make sure that I'm managing risk pro properly. So it's always going to be something that is a, a good quality company and not something that's super risky. All right. So give me your top three in ascending order. So your number three stock that you're watching. So <laughs> I just talked about not going into risk, but I think I'm going to put this at number three just because it is very risky. But I think that a lot of people might be surprised by this one and it's SPAQ, which I actually have a video coming out on that today. 
We'll look at SPAQ, and this is definitely one that has been has caught my eye. And this is one that's actually, um, you know, related to the SPAC type stocks, which are basically companies that are looking for private companies to reverse merge into. And recently, we found out that Fisker, uh, the EV company, is reignited, re re revived, and is. Uh, getting ready to reverse merge into SPAQ. Now, if this happens, I think that this could definitely be one that actually ends up getting a move on. If you guys recall, if anybody recalls, the Fisker Karma was a sexy looking car uh, created by the man himself. And so I think that this one actually has some real legs to it. It's giving it a second shot. The Fisker Ocean, which is the SUV that's coming out, looks pretty decent. Um, and the guy's just an incredible... Uh, artist when it comes to designing vehicles. He's designed vehicles for GM, Ford, Volkswagen, all of them, Aston Martin. And um, not only that, but he's got a partnership with Volkswagen as well uh, to, uh, you know, commandeer parts and that sort of thing for us. So I think that this one out of all of the crazy nonsensical EV type plays that are coming in, this one might actually have some promise to it. Okay. So right. This could be a good one. Um, as far as stay-at-home plays go right now, Zoom has tanked. Um, because why? Because of the positive news as it relates to the Rona vaccine. And so I think this is a really good opportunity. You can already see that it's starting to move up. 250 was going to be a really good spot for it. And sure enough, it came down around 247 and started to bounce from there. So you're not sharing your screen. Oh. Or I'm not seeing it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I was wondering. <laughs> I thought it was shared. I thought it was shared. All right. There you go. Oops. Hey, baby, this is, the, this is the real deal. We're showing them all of it. <laughs> Technical difficulties and all. Okay. So would you mind real quick, just pulling back Fisker real quick and just. Yeah. So this is the spec uh, SPAQ. This is what Fisker is going to be reversed. Okay. Part. Gotcha. Okay. And um, so, so what you, are you looking at? Like, so what's a support or what, what's an entry you're looking at potentially for this? So potential entry right now seems to be that it's formed a nice solid base around $13. Okay. Right now it's sitting around $13.97. But I think $13.30, $13 should be a good spot to grab some on the dip. Or if we see this break up over maybe around 15 bucks, it could make a nice move. I mean, it's come down from $21, so it's made a pretty decent reversal here. So I think it could be nice. Again, there's a lot of risk involved in this one. Uh, because it's speculative, but. Okay, so then your number two would be Zoom. Zoom, yeah. So I like Zoom, and then people shake their heads at me all, at this all the time, that it's trading, you know, 91% above its sales uh, or 91 times its sales. And so that being said, I don't think it matters much. The, the company is growing like crazy and um, the competition doesn't even come close to what Zoom can provide as far as ease of use and really just the popularity of it. And so with it's coming down off of, you know, positive Rona news, I think this is a really good time to grab some in the 250s. You see that, like, a, like I was saying earlier, when I wasn't sharing my screen, you can see that it came down around 248, which is pretty darn close. It's going up over VWAP right now on the 15 minute chart. I think this probably ends up doing quite well. So, getting it up over 257 probably could make its way back towards highs. I like Zoom a lot. Okay. So, um, and, I, and I like Zoom too, and we're actually on Zoom. Yeah. Um, excited. Yeah. Like, so you talked about this in your mentorship and then right after this, before we get to number one, I want to talk about your mentorship or, or your channel a little bit, but you had mentioned how these are good opportunities for the pullback to buy where I feel like people more, people get afraid within, within, when it's in the red, but as we're speaking, I mean, zoom's down about 3% and it, and so you were saying like today would be, would, would have been a great opportunity. And if it pulls back as there's more positive, news or good yeah. opportunities to get in yeah because here's the thing even if there's positive news on the rona which is great for everybody remote work isn't going anywhere yeah so people selling because they think that it's just gonna it's gonna lower its value just because you know there's positive you know uh, coronavirus vaccines doesn't mean a damn thing i mean zoom's here to stay for good in my opinion all right so before we get to brad's number one stock brad talk a little bit about your channel, Own the Chaos, and what people can expect there. Yeah, so Own the Chaos is basically a channel that I've created to be able to help people, regular Joes, um, you know, basically make money in the stock market. And whatever your financial freedoms you're looking for, um, that's what I really want to help you achieve. And so if you were just looking for some extra beer money or you want to turn this into a full-time jo full job, I want to be able to help you, and I think my channel can do it. Okay. 
Awesome. So if you guys have questions for Brad about a particular stock, um, feel free to put them in the comments below. With that said, without further ado, hit us with number one, what you're watching and why. Number one is going to be Etsy. And I know it's kind of weird. Um, Etsy is, has been one that I think still is just underappreciated. Right now, it's come down to around $100 a share, and I think it's a perfect pullback. It's saying it, it came from 115.45 highs. If we go and look at the daily chart, this has been an absolute monster. And the reason why I like Etsy so much is because it falls in line with the e-commerce space. And we've seen Amazon go to all-time highs of, what, $3,300 this week. It's been absolutely insane. But Etsy um, has sold off here, and I think it's going to be a really good opportunity. Etsy has tripled its storefronts since April. It's been absolutely crazy. With everybody losing their jobs, they're looking for alternative ways to make money. And Etsy has been the number one place to buy face masks from because people are creating them and, and making them and selling them on Etsy. We've seen, you know, uh, companies like Wix and uh, Squarespace, all of them increase in uh, revenue because of people trying to start their own businesses. And Etsy has a perfect setup for that. And so I think Etsy is going to be a really good one to grab, especially anything under $100. It will be cheap, in my opinion. We'll see Etsy around 150 by the end of the year, at least. Awesome. Love the prediction. So <clears throat> now for the bonus question, tell me a bargain stock under $10. Nokia. Nokia sitting actually under five bucks. Ooh, they got okay. some really good uh, 5G stuff going on. And then they're also getting the cloud computing, which we all know is pretty hot as well. So I think Nokia is like a low key one that not a lot of people are paying attention to, but it's already gotten back up to its pre-Rona highs and um, i think if we can get it above that 450 and really sustain above there we should see a nice move back to the five dollar range maybe even 10 by the end of the year depending on how their 5g tech goes all right i love it all right guys if you like these stocks make sure you like and subscribe uh fam go visit brad on his youtube channel at own the chaos i'll put it in the description where he goes live every sunday so sunday at 8 30 p.m eastern time he goes live to discuss what he's watching in the week upcoming, more stocks like this, but even talking about the general overall market. So that's a wrap, um, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> and B. Smith is out.